Zach Sang and the gang. It's Zach Sang and the gang. We are hanging out in the studio with Kathy Walkeley. Hello. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how are you? I'm great. We okay. are we are technically almost neighbors in a sense. I know. We, I can't believe that. We both live in Wayne and we've been there a whole, uh, 18 years or yeah. something crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny how, how separated the town is, like the valley and the hillside. Exactly. And you could be living there for 18 years and not and a known know. family. But it's just yeah. a huge, huge town. Huge. And, you know, you Real Housewives of New Jersey, you're doing it, mm-hmm. and you're turning into something insane. You are riding the success of the show and propelling forward in your career, which I think is incredible. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, it was, it's always a hobby. Baking and cooking has always been my hobby, my passion. Yeah. You know, raising my family, you start to find other ha- hobbies that keep you in the house and that you really enjoy. And I've always cooked and baked and w- with my growing up in a really Italian family. And um, I'm so glad that... What happened was the viewers actually really gravitated yeah. towards my cooking and wanted to see more and more and they wanted to taste it. And so I got such an overwhelming response from the viewers just seeing me in my kitchen, knowing that that's it came through the TV. Because it looks so good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Great. And it's amazing what people call for. And, yeah. you, you know, things that you take for granted your whole life. You know, it's something that you do all the time, and people really respond to it. And so, you know... Isn't it, that the it, best? It did. It motivated me to take the next step. And the best part is when you enjoy something so much, you're passionate about it, and you could do... You can make a living. Yeah. You could start a business from it. And I encourage anybody to do that, like yourself. Yeah. You started this radio station from a radio show from your own home. And look at you now. You're here in New York City with a radio show. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's amazing. It's insane on both America parts. the Beautiful. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, anything is really possible. And you took really, you took the opportunity of that Real Housewives gave you, which, I mean, did, and turned it into something. Did you ever think that you're going to, you know, turn it into what it is now? No, when they first approached not at all. you? No, not at all. I thought it would be fun. I was very skeptical about yeah. what, what it would, you know, involve. But... Um, I never. I didn't come on the show with an agenda. I didn't come on the show saying I'm going to be a cook. I'm going to. This was what I did, and this is what people, res- the viewers, responded to. Mm-hmm. Like that, a lot of people will stop me on the street. I love your family. That's not something. That's not a storyline. That's yeah. my family. I'm glad that you, res- you know, you find it interesting. I'm glad that you um, find it propelling. You know, I'm glad that that that's really interesting to you. But that's my family. I'm not making it up. It's not put on. It's just who I am. And I think the viewers are so smart that they respond to what's authentic. Yeah, and you guys truly are authentic. Because Hannah yeah. and I are fans of the show. Oh, we thank are. you. I'm we so watch, glad. We watch I'm all so the glad. time. And you guys are really the same. What it yeah. is on camera, you are off camera. We were talking for a while without the mics running and nothing going on. Exact same thing you get yeah. on camera. Well, it's not a script. Yeah. We're not we're not living someone else. We're living out we're playing ourselves. It's not like we're given a script and we're playing a different character. We are playing ourselves. So, you know what? You better own that. You better be who you are. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to mess up and eventually when you mess up, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. No. What people guys, don't like that. What you guys are doing is just letting people see into your everyday life. Yeah, and that's something that I'm so happy that you guys have stayed true to because I know a lot of other families or people would leave how they were beforehand because of the spotlight, because right. of this attention. Right. Or they take it and they kind of change. Well, Completely. you know what? Then what? After this is all over, then what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you go to pick up the phone and call your old friends and say, hey, I want to hang out. And they're like, I don't even know who you are. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. So, you know, what do you have then that's that's left? If you don't have your family from the beginning and you don't cultivate that and keep it strong, your foundation, afterwards, you're not going to have it either. And, you know, it, this is great that you bring that whole family, you know, core up because that was really the storyline of the past season mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Teresa. And obviously mm-hmm. everything Teresa is going through now is kind of insane and you ended the the last season on a good note correct absolutely you know i want to make sure that you know whether we're involved in their business or we're not involved in their business if they need us we're there for them um you know whether they utilize that or not yeah i you know what you can only do your part Mm -hmm. you know the other party has to do their part too you know but it was good we we talked about a lot of things and got a lot of things on the open the trick is to um keep that going yeah. You know what I mean? Keep it going and really back your words up with actions. And if you don't, well, then you're ended up in the same place. You have, know, people have to learn from their mistakes. Have they reached out to you? Well, you know what? We've been in contact a little bit here and there, but they've got their hands full with what's going on with them. And um, they know that we're here. And, you know, 
you can't be too invasive in someone else's personal business, you know? It's a, you kind of need to be welcomed in rather than kind of right. It's on the not door. you know something I'm not going to pry and you know it, you leave the door open. We're here and that's all you could do. Is that kind of hard? Is that like a hard line to kind of balance on in a sense because you are technically family? Yeah, but again, like I said, you have to respect each other's privacy, yeah. Yeah. and you have to um, leave the door open that they are welcome to discuss, talk to you, reach out to you for whatever reason, or just know that you're there is even sometimes a great thing yeah. you know um but you can't push yourself on anyone that's that's private yeah you know? all you can do is really tell your part say i'm here for you and if they choose to go to you then they choose to go to you and if not then you know that's what are you gonna exactly. do that's yeah, even if it's just for a laugh you yeah. know what i mean everybody needs to do that once in a while yeah. you know what it, it, it's there it, the, the door is open so who are you friends with on the show? Your friends with, are you genuinely friends with everybody? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm friends with everyone. But you know what happens is we we film together and we're together and we're it's working and we're together and doing things. And then we'll run into each other when we wrap filming and we'll we'll try to get together. But then when we're not when we're not filming, that's our time to really catch up on a lot of things that we've exactly. been, you know, mm -hmm. working on. And so, you know, and see the people that aren't involved with the show. Yeah. So, um it's a balance. What and is so, that schedule like? Um, it could it varies. Sometimes sometimes it could be like five days a week. Sometimes it could be two days a week. Sometimes it could be like a a, a six hour day. Sometimes it could be a two hour day. It's all all you know. It's different. It also goes based on what you got have going on in your life too, exactly. right? Exactly. And how we and how our events interact with everyone else, or if it's just a family event, or if you know if someone else has something going on really heavy duty in their lives, then you cover that more. It's it's a balance, you know. It's just like everyday life. You go through these you know, ups and downs and, um, you know, when you're busier and when you're less busy. So, yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the show before you got into it? Were you a fan of it? Because you knew well, yeah, I want, I want, I'm, it. I'm a Daniel big fan Staub of, yeah. off. I'm a big fan of, fan of Bravo shows to begin with, you mm -hmm. know, and then the housewives, I started watching back with the OC. Okay. okay. The, the, yeah. That was the original, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, they're the original. And I never, and Atlanta would just got me hooked even further. Mm, he's great. Yeah, I mean, they're <laughs> just, and, and I admire and, and like each of the women for different reasons. You mm -hmm. know, I think that most w me, people that watch also respond to each of the ladies in a different way. And yeah. I think that they all have certain qualities that are charming and cer certain qualities that pull you in. Um, for our show, um, yeah, I watched it, and it was kind of weird because it was, you know, watching people that I knew. Yeah, all the your time. family. And in I a never sense. ever, yeah, and I never expected it. I never expected to be on the show. It just happened. Yeah, you know. Um, and I always said I wouldn't be on the show. No, I could never do that. I could never do that. But surprisingly, when the opportunity comes to you and it keeps coming back to you, you know, because it wasn't. I kind of talked myself out of it quite a few times. Yeah. And really, like, and overanalyzed it so many times. Um, when you're in it, it's just, uh, it's a different, it's a whole different thing. Was it a scare, a scary at first when the cameras first started showing up and kind of, you know, you don't know what to expect, but then yeah. after what happens is you become very friendly with production they and become the cameramen, one of your family. Exactly. They're in your house. You're spending so much time with them and you don't even realize the cameras, you know, rolling after a while and you're joking and you're just going about your business like the, right now the camera's right here i'm not really even paying attention that the camera's yeah. there you know because <laughs> you know how to do it because it's just like second, second nature. nature i'm talking to you i'm being real that's you're, exactly you're just having a conversation you're living your life and if there's a camera following you you hope you look good you yeah. know but basically <laughs> a lot of times it is what it is and they get you when you don't look so good yeah. you know yeah. You, the other big thing was, you know, that we found out this season was, you know, your passion for cooking and, mm -hmm. you know, turning it into a business. Mm -hmm. The other thing we found out was Teresa making a whole bunch of jabs at you, saying that she kind of laid the groundwork for, you know, turning her Real Housewives fame into, you know, cooking success. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Um, she's well, be, your then, cousin, correct? Yeah. She's my cousin, my first cousin, yeah. Well, that could be said for Bethany. That could be said for Martha Stewart. That could be said for Rachel Ray. Let's see Julia Child, if we're going to go really back in history. I, I mean, Lydia mm -hmm. Bastianich. No, they're all done it before. Accurate. Listen, we could go back to the cavemen when they started rubbing sticks <laughs> together and started cooking food over the fire. So let's credit them, too. Why not? You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, if if you want to get technical, I'm older. I've been in the kitchen a little bit longer. <laughs> and wasn't there even um, with her cookbook some drama there with some family recipes and things she was claiming? Oh, for her I own? just you know, listen. That was a big misunderstanding. The the truth of the matter is, 
when you grew up in an a Italian household and well, not even any old fashioned household, any whole household that mothers cooked and yeah. shared mm-hmm. recipes. You, who did you share like recipes with? Your sister in laws, your cousins. You traveled from family yeah. to family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we came it, from our families came from the same town in Italy. They cook the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, really? You want to claim it? Go ahead, claim it. I really, you know, I was say, saying, admiring the picture, yeah. saying, oh, my mom's cookies. Like, it was brought mm-hmm. bad, back a childhood memory yeah. to me. I wasn't saying that they were my mother's recipes, but, which most likely they probably were the same recipes. Yeah. Who cares? Really? You're making money if off they it. Taste God good, God yeah. <laughs> hey, you they taste I mean? good, so good put it in there. Good for you. Right. <laughs> I mean, is it hard to look past that when she's your cousin and you were so close and all the petty things and obviously they start to add up? I mean, even if you officially say you look past it, can you really look past it? You know what? After a while, you become numb to it because you, you see it coming even. You, yeah. You, like, it's like, oh, here it comes. I know it. And you're like, whatever. You want to get hung up on that, then get hung up on it. Life yeah. is too short. You know, I can't be play that ping pong match. I can't. No. I've never been good at it. I'm not doing it. Can I be honest? The scary thing for me is you guys are so real. Mm-hmm. You know, you're the same way that you are on camera that you are off. Mm-hmm. And for, there was a period of time where I like to think like that Teresa was really putting it on for the camera with all the comments and everything. Mm-hmm. But to see how real you guys are off the camera makes me scared that what she's doing is actually genuine in a sense. Meaning, like, what happens on the camera is actually her. You know, the petty well, comments are her. Well, they don't just come out of the blue. You know, they're, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you can only put a certain act up for so long. Yeah. And, you know, your true feelings come out. Whether you think they're going to edit it out or they're not going to edit it out. You know what? If, if you said it, you, you know, said they're going to keep it. it. You know? Yeah. And whether you're, the, the trick is, if you said something and it hurt someone else's feelings, and that bothers you, then you apologize and you make it right. Mm-hmm. But if you don't apologize for it or you don't feel like you did anything wrong, then you keep making those same mistakes. Yeah, there's again. never Listen, an apology. Everyone makes mistakes. Mm-hmm. It's a fact of life. We're human beings. It's the, the, the smart ones that afterwards they realize how they've affected other people. They say, you know what? That was really bad of me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. And I'm sorry it affected you like that. Or maybe I did mean it that way and it was really of me yeah you know what i mean own up it right own it yeah i, I said it i was pissed off at you and yeah own i went back in. exactly sorry i hurt your feelings or at that time i wanted to hurt your feelings mm-hmm. how's that but now I, after we talked about it we're good and i and i and i'm sorry i hurt your feelings because it wasn't nice of me mm-hmm. okay we all do things that are and that are not nice once yeah. in a while Nobody's perfect. It happens. Yeah. The only difference is that there's cameras following you guys around and ca- capturing every single but part of it. Especially- and then the only th- the other thing, I'm sorry to interrupt, That's- but the other thing is that, you know what? Yeah, I did. I was I was mad that day. I yeah. was having a bad day. Somebody cut me off. Whatever the case may be, I just felt like being pissed off at you. Go ahead. You're human. It's all right. And especially with what you're involved with, with this show, it's like, it's going to happen. It's inevitable that you're going to exactly. make someone upset and say a comment. But you can't if not. you can own up to it, yeah. then at the end of the day, you guys still are fine. Exactly. But, but how do you go forward then? Because if you keep going, rehashing the same mm-hmm. thing over and over again. Listen, this and that really did happen this season. It kept oh, this going back. Oh, conveyor belt. Just like, get me off of this freaking ride. I'm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's It gets nuts. It gets nuts. Like, you just keep going around in circles. That's another thing. Is there ever, like, you know, a feeling like when you're shooting the season, you know, kind of like adding a little bit of spice to things? Like, the, the, the want or the need to kind of, like, add a little bit more to an average situation just to make it compelling? I don't know. I guess, you know, certain, there are people that, that do that. Yeah. You know, they exaggerate and whatever. But I don't like doing that because it's not authentic to who I am. If I'm mad about something, you're going to see that I'm mad about it. If I'm upset about something, you're going to see I'm, it. You're going to see that I'm upset. Like all the feelings that, you know, when we were in Arizona and that medium talking to, to me and talking, speaking through me, through the medium coming out as my father that had passed away mm-hmm. 10 years during that time. And um, those feelings were real. Like yeah. and you can't fake that and, and and people respond to that and people really can sense that you are hurting and it, the same way when you're happy they could sense it if it's fake they could see it and you you have to give the, the viewers credit to know to realize that they know better yeah mm-hmm. you know if you're saying something and your actions don't back it up well it's a dead giveaway yeah you know what I mean if your 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 words don't match your actions then they're just empty words. Have you ever regretted doing the show? 
No, not at all. You know, there's there's scenes that maybe I would say, oh, I wish it didn't. I didn't do that. Or I, you know, I wish I didn't wear that outfit. Or, I wish I didn't say that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, regretted doing the show as a whole. No. I mean, uh, you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. That's number one. You get to meet great people like yourselves <laughs> and you get to do a lot of different things that normally you wouldn't you know have the exposure you get to, to do. fulfill your dreams too. exactly and you know as a result of this it, it opened other doors a platform to do other things that i even really never even knew that i wanted to do mm -hmm. you know it every stage in your life brings something different and for you to open your eyes and take advantage of the opportunities that are put in front of you is a gift that's really. I, I i give you so much credit well, you know, thank you. turning the one situation into a whole bunch. I've always been a proponent of, you know, kind of building opportunities off of one. Mm -hmm. And you've done that so well. I well, remember seeing the first episode where you were cooking in gelatis yeah. in, in yeah, the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and, and just seeing all the food come together and seeing how far it's come. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. And um, it's a learning process, yeah. you know, on our own, because it is something that we are legitimately doing from the ground up, my husband and I together. And that has put like stress on our relationship at, at times. But it, we've we've learned from it and we've become closer and know how to work together on a professional level and not just on a personal level. So you, know? you guys are not only partners, but you're partners in business as well. Exactly. And that's not easy to do. And so um you know, it's encouraging for other people that want to do that as well. Yeah. Like, trust your mate because he's the best partner. You chose him in life for a reason. So tr trust him and work together because at the end of the day, it's about the two of you. And whether it's personal or business, at the end of the day, it's the two of you together. Tell me about the cannoli kits. Well, the cannoli kits. It's a genius idea. Well, thank you. I mean, we're lucky in this area of the country that we could get fresh Italian pastries whenever we want them. We yeah. There's bakeries and there's, you know, big gourmet stores and all that. But for people that are inland in their in the you know the middle of the country or even on the other coast, they don't they don't have access to it as we you know even yeah. if you go down south, you, you don't have the access. So if you've ever had a cannoli before. <laughs> Uh, you know that it tastes the best when it's freshly filled because it maintains its crispness and the you know the cream is cold and and then the the, the so shells good. are crispy and crunchy. But after they've been filled for a while, they get soggy. Yeah. So, how do you get that to people? How do you get that to people with being that fresh? And so I figured out a way to make it that they the cream comes frozen and you. You can. It's in a pastry bag, and you fill your own cannolis on demand whenever you want them. The shells are packaged separately, and they last like for a, over a year on your your in your cupboard because they're like That's dry. That's awesome. And then the the cannoli cream goes right in your freezer because it comes frozen. Goes right in your freezer, and you take it out like about an hour or so before you're ready to fill them, and you just fill them. And they're so easy to do, and you can. Um, embellish them with beautiful, you know, different nuts or chocolate chips or powdered sugar or whatever your your favorite thing is. If you like little special colored candies for the holidays or a special birthday party or something like that. And they're so easy that a kid could do them. And there's That's no such baking, a great idea. Yeah. No baking involved. And they're always there ready for you when you want them. What's next for you after the cannoli kits? Have you thought about that yet? I'm working. Well, I have my I have a, a dessert book that I'm working on right now. Very cool. And it's called Indulge. And it's all mini desserts. And my idea of dessert is, listen, we all want dessert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's a want. Yep. It's not a need. Right? We, we don't need it. We want it. And when we want it, we want it to be great. We don't want it to be low fat. We don't want it to be tasteless. We don't want it to. We want it to be decadent and indulgent. I want to make the most out of the calories I'm about to consume. Yeah, exactly. I'm so excited. But, I, <laughs> <laughs> but the whole idea about it is to have that balance in life. You yeah. want it, but you know that overindulgence is no good. So uh, everything that I make is mini, two bite size. You get the packed full of flavor, indulgence, decadence in that special, special way, but only two bites. And you're satisfied because it's all natural. It's all the best ingredients. You use them at their peak of freshness. And you, you're satisfied with those two bites. You don't need any more. So it's a way to find that indulgence but live a balanced life in a more realistic way. Because if you, you don't have dessert, you're not happy. No. You yeah, feel no. like you're, you're deprived. I'm missing out on something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like the finishing. You know? It's like you, the best things in life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and it's just, it, you know, everybody knows that you have to do everything in moderation. Yeah. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, you have to find a way to, to moderate it all. And this is the best way to do it. And keep it small, keep it sweet, and keep it yummy. That's it, you know? What so. is the ultimate goal in all of this? 
What is it? Like, is it a book? Is it a, a well, storefront? Well, I do have, or... I, I have my cookbook coming out. It'll yeah. be out in 2014. And I want to make it easy for other people, you know, to, to make these desserts at home. But then I'm also working on my dessert line. You know, all minis, individual awesome. size portion, and that's coming along really great. All my special, my favorite things, my favorite flavors in a dessert line. Um, you know, and it, it's wonderful because I'm, I'm pairing up with other people that want to get involved, and I'm, I'm working on you know the cake. What, what comes with a, a nice cake, piece of cake, or what comes with a nice dessert? Your your favorite cup of coffee. So yeah. it, you know, everything is everyone's on the run. They want things quick. They want things fast. But they want they want it all. Yeah. So you know you have your cup of coffee, you have your your dessert. Why not pair them together? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I you know and I love eating um, and cooking small portions with like tasting everything mm-hmm. because I feel like you know life is so short. You want it all, right? Yeah. So how do you do it all? You do it all, but you do it small, and you get a chance to taste everything. So appetizers, also mini appetizers and things like that. Now, so. are you baking and coming up with the recipes all yourself in the yes. test kitchen? right now. Not that specific test kitchen, but, you but have your, my uh, kitchen your in my home. Now. Yeah. Oh, in your house. In my house, yeah. Because awesome. I just feel more comfortable doing it at home. And um, It's hard. It's scary when everything's so much bigger. Well, the thing that's that's one thing, but then it's like I had to think about it too much. This yeah. is just second nature. I'm in the house. I'm doing other things. I'm answering phone calls. I'm doing things, and I'm testing every single recipe two times, three times, four times. Make sure that it's it, it's as simplest form for someone else to do them. I want to yeah. make sure that they're foolproof. And it's a lot of it's time consuming, and it's um it's a lot of work, but. I enjoy it so much, so it doesn't really seem like work to me. The writing it down is the work. For yeah, me. is yeah. it scary to eventually kind of give control over that recipe to somebody else? Event like it's eventually going to happen. It is, but you know that's why I'm testing it so many times. Each recipe is getting tested at least twice or three times by me, and then I'm printing it up and I'm sending it out to my friends for them to test it and find what you know answer the you know put the questions down that you're running into. Yeah. So I know that. It, it's I have all the questions answered mm-hmm. you know I don't it's not scary at all because I'm 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 standing behind it. I'm secure in, in what I'm writing down you know awesome that's yeah cool. yeah yeah so I've always been interested to see how that works and to kind of get a glimpse into it that's really cool yeah you have to put yourself in a person's shoes that has never baked before or never cooked before. what yeah. they what are they going to do and what are they the questions that they're asking and um you want to make it foolproof for them because you want to encourage them to turn the page yeah and try the next recipe you know? Yeah, you don't want to scare them away right. at all. <laughs> exactly. And I get easily scared away at some stuff like that. And, yeah, and then the biggest thing for me is these are, um, how do you, how, like an outline for you. This is the, what worked for me, but this is no way a law. This yeah. is mm-hmm. my book, the way I do it, but I encourage whoever buys the book or whoever experiments with the recipes to make them their own. Experiment. Yeah, tweak them a little. Because that's the whole idea of baking and sharing and cooking and, and sharing your recipes because it's sharing your love and make it your own for your family. If someone, if the recipe calls for peaches and you don't like peaches, substitute it for something else. Mm-hmm. Just make the adjustment a little bit. Maybe it's nectarines. Yeah. Maybe it's plums. Try it out. Do what your family loves. Do what you love and It'll it'll come off really good if you follow what you love because that's what's worked for me. Very cool. Next season of Real Housewives in New Jersey, you start shooting soon. Well, they're getting everything in order, so you know we're still going through the reunion. Um, we have one more uh, episode airing next this coming up sur- Sunday, um, and so we're just going to get through that first and yeah. see how things yeah. go. The reunions you know? are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, the best. yeah, yeah, they are yeah. juicy. Now there was yeah. a rumor flying around that you were going to be downgraded as a cast member. False? Well, you're gonna have to watch and see how that Only plays out. Only if they bring Rosie on, right? <laughs> I want Rosie. Rosie. I want so Rosie bad. as a regular. Oh, yeah, she doesn't she's even have so to be great. a housewife. She's so great. Have I'm you so ever? Happy for her. Have you ever thought about getting your own reality show separate of Real Housewives? Um, I never really thought about. It. There's a lot of people that um talk about it and have asked me and you know have brought up that same thing. Um, you know, I. I it's not something I would say no. I don't want to do. I'd have to have to be in the right situation for us. You know. Um, We'll never know. You never know. You never know, especially if it was something that could really follow my family and um, I feel like you have a lot going on and, you know, how, you know, how your family changes and each and each aspect of your lives and how it grows, you know. So um, 
Sure. I'll, you know, I'm always open to every idea that comes my way. And I think Rosie's a character enough oh, to hold she's it. great. She can she's definitely great. hold like a 45 minute episode. Oh, yeah. She's going to be doing a lot with me. We're coming up where Rich, you know, where I mentioned earlier when we weren't, weren't on the air that we are building our own house. Yeah. And um, I've planned the whole, you know, I've worked with the architect and planned the whole ha- house out myself, designed it pretty much myself. And Rich has been like, you know, there for support, but not yeah. really that, you know that involved but when it comes to working on the house and hiring people and all that we're going to be doing that together and Rosie's really good at that kind of stuff so we're going to be doing a lot of that stuff together I so. could see her doing that yeah. stuff That's so oh, funny. It's, she could definitely manage yeah 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 so it's going to be a funny it's going to be a fun ride we'll see how, how we all it'll stick keep together your, with that it'll keep your stress level down yeah, at least yeah, yeah, <laughs> have yeah. some humor in there well we'll see I don't know <laughs> <laughs> it may add to the stress who knows <laughs> I, I have one more question. Your yes. kids, yes. how do they take it? The whole thing. They're great. They're just so unaffected by it all. Really? They really are. Joseph is still, he's a senior in high school, and, you know, he'll get some jokes here and there, but he goes about his day the same way. I remember when we first aired, um, he went, he, he hadn't told anybody in school, and Victoria hadn't really told anybody at school that we were going to be on. And um, we had already filmed the season and it was starting to air. And so one of the few kids at school were like, oh, my God, I just saw you on TV. Was that you? That's you. I saw you on TV last night. And Joseph was like, no, nah, it's not me. It's somebody else. And it's just like me. <laughs> yeah. Totally unaffected, you know, by, by it all. They still have to do the same things that they always did. They still have their chores around the house. Like if the garbage's not taken out, hell, there's hell to pay. You know, yeah. like he still does things around the house. He cleans the garage. And same with her. She, they, they pick up, you know, they do all the things they, they have to do. They're not, um, they haven't changed at all. They're, they've they've gotten closer actually because I've been busier taking you know with the yeah. with Rich and I with the business, so they've actually you know depended on each other more, and it's been wonderful to see it happen. They became more independent and leaned on each other as far as independent from us and more dependent on one another and and like taking care of each other. So it's worked out better. Yeah, oh, great. so great. Because I would have like been spoon well, feeding them still. Yeah, because I mean, it is really a scary thing because you see like Danielle Staub and her daughters, obviously it affected <laughs> them in a, uh, not a cool way. And well, I don't know. I think that her daughters, are, they're, they're beautiful girls and they're gorgeous. doing really well. I think from what the last I heard, I think they're doing really well. That one, one daughter's got a, a contract with a modeling agency yeah, and Christine. she's she's beautiful. And the other little girl, I think is... Um, Growing up just as beautiful. So I, I give her a lot of credit. Right, she she could, got out at the right time, I think. Exactly. You took the cameras yeah. to take a step back to kind of. Yeah, and let that's that a good happen. mom right there. Yeah. That, you know, knows when to take their kids out of a situation that could be dangerous for them, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Cassie Walkeely. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. You're Zach. great. Thank you Where, thank you. Where can everybody buy the cannoli kits? You could get them on my website, kathywalkeely.com. And, um,. I hope that everybody likes them, enjoys them. You're great. Make them for their family. It's my the name of my company is called Dolce de la Dea, which translates to goddess sweets. And the idea behind it is allowing everyone to feel like a goddess in their own kitchen and, you know, enjoy and make these cannolis and be proud of it and say, Yeah, I made them because you did. And you made them yourself. And a new dessert book coming out in twenty fourteen. Yes. Indulge. Kathy, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great to be here.